Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 10.2.2.3 Troubleshooting Single Area OSPF Version 2. This video is a part of the Cisco RNS Scaling Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now in this packet tracer, we have, this is kind of one of the last ones that you do for, besides the skills integration challenge, for not just chapter 10, but the entire class, um, if you're in the scaling networks version 6 curriculum. Um, we have configured single area OSPF version 2 before, remember that handles IP version 4 networks and how we configure that, even some of the fine tuning that we did. Um, now we're actually going to uh, troubleshoot it. So this stuff is already being configured. How do we troubleshoot? Remember, there's you know steps to figuring out uh, where to start. You know when you call those uh, help desk people on the phone. A lot of times, especially your internet service provider, they'll start with simple stuff like is your stuff plugged in and everything. So those are some of the cabling choices that you have. Um, I like to start here with our addressing scheme, making sure our addresses are correct. Uh, so like PC1, for instance, here, 172.16.1.2. This is simple stuff that we can check here, right? Uh, PC2, 172.16.2.2. Everything's right there. All right, PC3, 192.168.1.2.1.1. Everything looks okay there. Um, let's see, the web server, make sure it's correct. Okay. And again, they don't even tell us that over here. Uh, so let's look at our router configurations and we'll look at the interfaces first. To do that, I like to just do a simple show enable, then do a simple show run. So our interface G00, that looks correct. Interface S000. That looks correct. Interface S001. That looks correct. So everything looks okay there. Let's check our twos addressing first and then we'll go to our OSPF configurations. So G00, 172.16.2.1 looks correct. 172.16.3.2 looks correct. 172. Or sorry, 192.168.10.9, that looks correct. And serial 010 also looks correct. Okay, now let's lastly check R3. G00 there looks correct. S000 that looks correct. And S001 as far as the addressing looks correct. Okay, now let's check our OSPF configurations. So we got process ID of one. So remember, we need to look for all of the so 172.16.1.0.0.0.255 area zero all right remember this is single area so they're all in the same area that's this land here 172.16.3.0.0.0.3 for the size 30 wildcard area zero that's right and then one 72.16.10.4. Okay, I think they meant 192.168, so that one is incorrect. So I'm going to copy that because I need to do a no for that network. So config T and router OSBF1. And then no network for that one. Then we're going to put in the right network, 192.168.10.4, 0.0.0.3, .0 area 0. And boom, we get our adjacency formed with R3. So that network down here was entered in correctly. Okay. 
Looks like everything else is okay. They could have put a passive interface. Oh, they did for G00 here, so that's good. Um, I don't notice any adjacency or uh, hello timers or dead timers set here or altered. Um, so everything looks okay. We got clock rate set. So everything looks okay there. Let's check our two. All right, so router OSPF1, passive interface for G00, 172.16.2.0, 0, 0.0.0.255, 172.16.3.0, 0.0.0.3, and 192.168.10.8, sorry, 0.0.0.3. .0 that all looks right. We got a, if you notice, remember our propagating the default route lab, okay, that's kind of, this network is outside of our, control. So we've got an IP route there and we're sending it out of 0, 010. So that's correct. Um, we also want to make sure though that we're propagating that. I don't see the IP default or the IP um, the default information originate command. Sorry, entered in here. So we probably want to go enter that because R2 and R R1 and R3 are not going to get this default route. So router OSPF1 default information originate. So we want to make sure we put that in there. And you notice we got some points for that, right? So that's good there. I didn't notice any other timers or anything configured on the interfaces. So we should be good. I do, well, we got a clock rate. Let's make sure that wasn't a bandwidth. All right, now let's go to R3. router OSPF1 and again this was just left over from my show run command so we got three directly connected networks 192.168.1.0 that's down here that's correct 192.168.10.4 that's down here correct with the wildcard as well 10.8 correct with the wildcard as well okay now let's look here it says serial 001 has a IP hello uh, interval timer of 20. Now, I don't remember seeing that on R2, so we would want to configure 001 on R2 with the same timer or remove the timer from R3. Doesn't really tell us which one they want us to do, so let's try putting the timer on R2. Okay, so we'll do IP OSPF hello interval 20. Remember, the timers have to be the same on each end, otherwise it will not work. So it formed the adjacency, but I'm thinking it just doesn't want the timer at all. So let's do no IP OSPF hello interval 20. Okay, and that's going to take that down, but let's go to inter config interface S001, no IP OSPF, hello interval 20. All right, so it just wanted us to remove it. Again, it didn't really tell us which one, so you might have to play around with that, but it basically wanted us to remove it so that both of them could... Uh, configure a link between R2 and R3. So again, we tried putting it on R2. It didn't want us to do that. It just wanted us to remove it from R3. So you don't have to put it on and remove it from R2. Just simply remove it from R3 with the no IP OSPF hello interval 20 command on interface S001. Okay, that gives us 100 out of 100. Now again, some other things to check in troubleshooting are cabling. Um, you know, making sure other things are right, but we kind of just walked through, saw our OSPF configurations with a simple show run. Um, you could also do show IP OSPF. Um, you could do show interface brief to get more information on each interface, show IP route to see what you have connectivity to, all different types of ones that you can do. Pinging back and forth, uh, that also works. So again, in the end, you want full connectivity, and we have 100 out of 100 in this lab.